is for Baba. T is for Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends. P is for Play School. F is for Fireman Sam. When he is the fire Fireman Sam is there on time. S is for Spot. Spot, Spot. A lovable spot. And ABC is for the best in children's video. They're all available for you to collect now. Three Troublesome Engines Once upon a time there lived several engines in a shed at the end of the main line. They were all tasked with important jobs, but one engine in particular was gathering more and more cobwebs each day. This engine's name was Edward. His engine crew found it increasingly difficult to keep his paces. His driver was trying to be gentle. I don't know, old boy. You're just not the engine that you used to be. Edward was limited to short journeys across the line, pulling local trains and shunting in the yard. Good riddance, smarmed one of the other engines in the shed as he watched Edward pull off out of the yard limits. The engine in question was Ralph, and he had little sympathy for engines who he thought were in unfit condition. Ralph was a large tank engine who usually pulled passenger trains, but was appointed to handle goods when necessary. He watched his friend Eagle, the red engine, pull into the platform of the local passenger train that terminated at Knapford. Typical, fumed Ralph. What's typical? Eagle asked. That this railway continues to run as if we're only second rate. We should be second to none. Fancy being an old engine like Edward, over there bursting a cylinder when we should be running a proper railway. Eagle gave him a green look. He wasn't fond of Edward either. Just then, Gordon the big engine huffed into the opposing platform and hissed. Will you two stop dawdling? This railway has a reputation to maintain. Ralph tried to find his words. That's exactly what I was telling Eagle here, Gordon. Second to none. That's who we are on the NWR. Gordon wasn't so sure. He gave the two engines a watchful eye. So it may seem. Still, it doesn't matter. Neither of you will ever get to know what it's like to bask in the limelight. I am, after all, the token face of the railway. And with that, Gordon departed with the express, giving an incredulous huff to make his point proven. Now it looks like we have two engines to eliminate, Ralph smited. No, no, put in Eagle. Leave him to Amos. Those two engines have enough dirt between them already. Eagle was right to keep their distance from Gordon. Amos was enough trouble as it already was. Both he and Gordon managed the express services and bickered endlessly. Ralph took his passengers down the main line, but all attempts to remove his sour mood from his boiler were not successful. He met Amos at the other end of the line and exacerbated his feelings towards Edward and Gordon. Amos listened carefully, not saying much at all. Leave Gordon to me, 
I think, however, you can give Edward a good old one in the headlamp. This is what you should do. And Ralph listened carefully as Amos told him his idea. One of Ralph's duties was to bring stone from the quarry at the end of one of the branch lines to the harbour at Knapford. Ralph despised his job particularly because he more than often was paired to work with Edward. Edward usually kept to himself as he shunted the trucks around the quarry, while Ralph would usually make a quick exit. But today, Ralph decided to get there ahead of time and shunt instead. Soon enough, Edward arrived and was a little surprised to see the train already arranged. There's been a change of plan, Ralph started. The quarry manager has asked if I could shunt here and you can take the trucks instead. Edward was uncertain. He hadn't pulled trucks in this number in a long time, but decided not to argue. He was soon coupled up and was sent off back up the branch line towards that Edward was always careful when pulling trains, especially trucks, but he struggled with the weight of this particular train today. The trucks, who were usually pulled by Ralph, were not the best behaved specimens, so were eager to show Edward a trick or two. As Edward exited the quarry, he climbed up a small grade, and when he reached the top, a sudden push forward increased his speed beyond what he or the driver was comfortable with. On, 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 screamed the trucks. Edward went faster and faster down the line, trying his best to apply his brakes, but the trucks were too great in number for any of his efforts. A signalman who was in charge of the yard limits towards Tidnip saw Edward's dismay, so made the quick move of diverting him onto a siding where some stray wagon sat on the end. The wagons were splintered as Edward crashed through them with a bang and rolled into some overgrown grass. The trucks were delighted with their trick and laughed ferociously. Edward was depressed and didn't say much as he was lifted onto a flatbed by the breakdown train. The fat director came to the scene to find out what had happened. He spoke to the engine crew in a discreet voice as Edward quietly observed. He soon turned to the old engine. Will I be able to pull trucks again, sir? The fat director wore a pained expression and shook his head. I don't know, Edward. I really don't know. Did you hear what Mr. Hack declared? asked Eagle. I did, put in Gordon. It may be a long time before Edward is allowed out of the shed again. The railway doesn't have the money or facilities to make him into a proper new engine again. Huh, just as well, snorted Amos, who was trying not to smirk. I was beginning to question whether Edward was a proper engine in the first place. Henry felt he had a thing or two to say to the engines, but decided to remain respectfully silent. He and Gordon soon fell asleep, leaving Ralph, Amos and Eagle still awake. They smiled at each other, then Amos said to them, One down, two to go.
absolution. The North Western Railway was a very different place from what it used to be. Edward the old engine sat at the back of the sheds, wondering if he would ever come out again. Months passed, and the engines tried to continue their work as per usual. One stormy morning, Ralph was waiting at the station for Henry's connecting service, but as the minutes turned into hours, the blue engine knew something was not right. Moments later, a bus arrived. A horde of angry passengers buzzed onto the platform, and among them was the fat controller. Ralph saw to it that he didn't question the rousing anger of the passengers, and dutifully continued his journey down the branch line. He met Amos and Eagle at the other end of the line later that day to tell them the news. It would seem, started Amos, that Henry has been indisposed. He's a disagreeable engine, so it was only a matter of time until it happened. So this means it's only us and Gordon now? Ralph asked. That's right, and we must show the fact controller that the three of us alone can manage this railway just as effectively. Gordon's ego is too big for his own boiler, and this is exactly what will help us out. Amos plotted his idea to the other engines. Ralph sniggered. Eagle, the red engine, observed, silent. Gordon's Express leaves Knapford Station each morning at half past seven. Usually, Ralph would shunt his coaches into line before tending to his own, but today, they had other plans. Amos usually started the day with a slow goods train that also started from Knapford. Ralph backed the coaches into Platform 2 instead of Platform 1. The station porter looked confused. These coaches shouldn't be here. There's been a... Last minute change of plan, reassured Ralph. I've been told by the fact controller that the express will depart from platform 2 just for today. So without any further question, the porter redirected the passengers to the newly adopted platform. While the coaches were being arranged, Ralph had seen to it that the line Gordon usually takes to get to platform 1 was blocked by some troublesome trucks, who delighted in the idea of sabotaging another engine. Wait until he sees us, the truck giggled. Amos backed down onto the coaches without wasting any time, and soon enough, the express departed just as Gordon finally arrived in the station. Goodbye, Gordon. Have a nice day pulling trucks for me. Amos howled in laughter and soon disappeared from the station. The big blue engine had never been so embarrassed. Amos, not being an express engine, rocked the coaches around, leaving the passengers very cross indeed. They soon led into trouble. Another engine from the mainland was slowly moving across the junction with a long train of trucks, and the signalman had failed to give Amos any notice, as he thought the express would be on the outer left line rather than the centre. Amos soon saw what was ahead of him and slammed on his brakes, just in time. But as the train screeched to a halt, all the passengers lurched forward, falling out of their seats and onto the floor of the express coaches. He continued his journey to the end of the line rather sensibly and brought the train home after terminating. Amos slunk into the sheds that evening, where Ralph and Gordon were already waiting. I heard about your little game today, Gordon started, and I won't put up with your tomfoolery. That's enough. It was the fat controller. I've been on the telephone all afternoon receiving complaints from express passengers, who are regular patrons, may I add. And they were none too pleased with your service, Amos. Needless to say, I'm not pleased either. Ralph was in on it too. He put the coaches in the wrong platform. Don't pull me into this, cord, Ralph. Enough, boomed the fat controller. My railway is already under intense strain, and I wouldn't do this under such strenuous conditions. But I have no other option but to detain you from any future work on my railway. I will not tolerate this kind of behaviour. 
you will go back to the mainland immediately, the both of you. And without another word of argument, Ralph and Amos quietly left, leaving Gordon alone in the sheds. The work increased, but both Gordon and Eagle pushed to make ends meet. Soon enough, Edward was back in action again, and Henry was out of the tunnel too. But without the previous power of his former engines, the fact controller's frustration was still growing. He sat on the telephone, hearing the classes of engines that were on offer for purchase or loan from the mainland railways. The four big engines idled around the yard, arranging their trains and going about their business. And then, the fat controller realised, and remarked to the voice on the other end of the phone. What we need, he said, is a tank engine. Years pass, and Eagle quietly remained in his position on the railway. Henry returned home, new shape and all. He met Eagle at the station one morning. Both engines were quiet for a short period, and then Eagle spoke. This is my last day on Sodor. Looking after your work was the last responsibility that the fat controller had given me, but it seems because of my close relationship with former engines on this railway, he doesn't want to lose any chances. You do know that everybody has been expecting us to go at one another for years, remarked Henry. Yes, said Eagle. And frankly, that's not how I want to go down. Henry, the green engine, acknowledged Eagle as he uncoupled from his coaches one last time and chuffed away from the island of Soda, the red engine's future now uncertain.